sorted out. Yeah. Before that way, they could go back to their rehearsal space and they could kink it out by themselves on their own, you know, on their own dime. And exactly, it's easier. Exactly, amazing. So, so I was listening to a bunch of the tracks you sent me that you've worked on before we jumped on the call, and the mixes really sound amazing. Can Thank you, you tell me about your approach to mixing? Because it's it's really awesome. Um, one of the things that I always am very adamant to both, uh, you know, my assistant and interns that I've had and stuff like that, and anyone that asks is templates. Um, templates for everything, for for tracking, for mixing, um, anything like that. Anything that can save you time and get you going. Um, I think that's been the key. And also, like anything else, like I said before, I'm always trying to do better than I was the day before. So even with my mixing templates, if I'm not using something for like three or four mixes, it's out of my template. My templates change. Wow. You know, I'm I'm on iteration like 25 of my mixing template. You know, Whew. because I'm going through and saying I don't ever use this. Why is this on my template for drums? I'm using this now. Let's make sure that that's everywhere. You know, what is on my master bus chain? That's all great. You know, it's it's really about understanding what you're trying to get out and also being able to get those things quickly. You know, for me. If if I know the track needs that like Neve sounding EQ, I don't want to go and search through plugins to find it. I want a Neve style EQ there. I want an SSL yeah. style EQ there. I want this kind of compressor. I want this kind of compressor, so that I can quickly just go boom, 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 boom. Get and it, yes, there are situations when that doesn't work, and then yes, you take the time and work. You go around it, but for ninety percent of the time, getting things to where they need to be. It's there, and the it's like customizing your own uh, console almost exactly in a sense. And at the end of the day, the quicker you are to being able to get a really good level, balanced, and panned track without any EQ compression or anything like that, and the quicker then you are able to apply all those things to those tracks, then you're able to spend the time to be creative. And I find that that's the same thing with anything. The more time I have to spend getting a tracking template up, the mixing template. You know, when I have down days, like over the holidays, I sat and said, well, I have a free day. I could go and do some housework, which I did. But then I sat down and said, okay, well, I haven't touched my mixing template in probably two or three months. Let me go through and get some, get rid of some redundancies, see if I can clean up some stuff, make stuff streamline. And again, it's always that thing of like, you know, I want my mix that I did yesterday to be slightly, you know, I want my mix today to be better. I want everything that I'm doing to be at a high point. And I feel like, you know, it's, it's, this is so prevalent with watching the whole Michael Jordan thing that's just come out right now. Oh, I, I haven't seen it, but I'm also not a huge sports guy, but, but I'm interested it, in it actually because it, I grew up in the, you know, that was like when I was a kid and I was like, I remember the Bulls playing the Knicks. Oh, you're a Chicago guy. I am. So, <laughs> it's so, funny. Like I, I forget, I, for, I sometimes forget where the hosts are, where the guests are at because like I, I interview people all over, but, and but yeah, it's, it's so nuts. Totally. And, um, I think the biggest thing, whether or not you're like, I was a basketball fan. I actually played with his kids on a team, like no way. And you know, did the national thing. And you know, when I was young, so cool. And one of the things that just was so awesome about, and so is awesome about this documentary that isn't over at the time that we're recording this is the dedication and more of like someone saying, you can't do this. And then this person being like, Oh no, not only will I'm, do this, I'm going to do it 10 times better than you expect me to do it, even if I suck at it right now. And I think that mentality of like going in and saying, all right, well, I'm the underdog, great. I love being the underdog because one, if I fail, I fail. But if I succeed, I'm breaking through the ceiling now because yeah. there's nothing there. And I think, you know, not to be full of myself at all because I, I'm, I'm not, not that guy. If anything, I'm detrimentally the opposite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is that, you know, over the past year or two, I've won mix, mix outs with, you know, stuff that was done by very good people. And the artist and I may have tracked something and then they were like, all right, well, we're, we're going to send it to this person. 
we send it to that person. We get it back and say, hey, man, you know, let me just give a go at this. And, you know, because I, I, you know, I don't think that they're getting 100% what you're trying to do with this song. And we'll do it. And then, then, you know, in a blind test, boom, my thing gets picked. And, like, that's the greatest feeling ever. But at the same time, it's always that strive of, like, I don't care who you are. Like, I, I respect those people and I look up to them and I want to be them. But at the same time, if it's me versus you, I don't care who you are. I have to just beat me and hope that it beats you and just keep striving for that upper echelons and pinnacle to, to reach. Nice. So, 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 so is that like a major focus of yours of just like getting better at mixing and like be like, is that, is that one of your goals to be like a premier mixer? My goal is just to be a premier engineer. And at the end, like for me, I love mixing. Um, there's something really awesome about it, but there's also something that's really not awesome about it, which is the fact that you're not really in the trenches dealing with this stuff, you know? Um, yeah. and especially, working on your own projects, you know, not personal projects, but, you know, projects that you've tracked, you're also, sure. you're at a disadvantage because you, you know, you've heard this song, you've dealt with it, you've lived with it for so long that you now have to find a way to erase that memory and find a way to start again. And that, I think, is probably the most difficult thing. I think mixing someone else's song, for the most part, is relatively easy. I think it really comes down to really understanding where you want something to go and taking it there and having a clear vision on it and really being true to that vision from spot one to the end. And I feel like as a tracking engineer, I get to go on a journey every single day and I'm in the trenches with the artist and it's a totally different experience, you know? I think, yeah, and I had to do this kind of interview with someone else, and they were like, you know, do you prefer mixing over tracking? And honestly, I really do prefer tracking over mixing. Not that I don't love mixing, but there's something about being in a room with a group of people and having a common goal and being that guy to help get to the common goal and come up with creative ideas and try and do stuff that, you know, no one ever does, like, there's production techniques that I know, well, maybe that I can't say I know no one does it, but I can say that there's probably only a handful of people that might do certain things that I do. And I want, I want that to be the case. I want that to be a new experience. Wow. That's awesome, dude. Thank you for sharing all that. <laughs> um, yeah. I wasn't going to ask you about mixing. <laughs> sure. J- j- ask, <laughs> ask me about mixing. No, I love it. I'm, I'm currently mixing an album right now. So, I love it. Amazing. So, can you get a little bit deeper into what your what 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 is actually entailed in your in your template? Do you do you have like a lot of is it routing, uh, or is it mostly just like the plugins, or is it a combination? And like, I, don't, I guess like, how do you mix? Like, do you are you referencing while you're mixing also? So, on. so as I said, tracking, uh, referencing every stage of the game is always important. And yes, I always reference when I mix. I'm all, I have a Spotify playlist on my monitor controller that the artist curates and I'm going back and, <laughs> and, and, and I'm going back and forth and listening and seeing if I'm in the, the genre of where we want to be. Right. Yeah. And you know, because you can make a mix sound great and then flip over and be like, whoa, I'm way too bright. I'm way too brittle. You know, this music is dark. And then you're like, well, crap, I got to redo this whole thing? No. Like, as long as you have that baseline, again, you know, you know the box, you know how to stretch the box, you know, we, we've got a common goal. So referencing for me is number one. After that, yeah. te- after that template-wise, um, yes, a lot of it is routing, a lot of it is making sure, you know, color coding. Color coding is probably number two on the list of important things, both tracking really? and mixing. Have your stuff mm. organized. Like, I, you know, I recently recorded a song in LA and, uh, you know, we were going at this really, really amazing studio. 
and we had a talk with the engineer before we came in and you know, I was like, you know, don't worry, stuff will be fine. And we we walked up and uh, opened the session the first day, and he, he was like, scrolled through it, and he was like, all right, we're good to go. And he had prepared for like an hour and a half of our day trying to like go through and figure out and, you know, get things to where he understood. And he turned around, and he was like, this is the cleanest thing I've ever seen. Like, thank you for making my job easy. And I, <laughs> and for me, it was kind of like, yeah, like this is the point. Like, if you're organized, then anyone can come in and sort through it. Even if it's 150 tracks, you can sort through it as long as it's organized. But if yeah. you have no sense of organization and no sense of that, like, yeah, you can get stuff done, but man, it's so much quicker when I can scroll through and my drums are red and my guitars are yellow and I know exactly where things are on my page. So that's probably my second biggest thing. Third thing then is routing and gain staging and making sure all the levels are going through, um, which I have an insane amount of routing, uh, probably w- way more than I should. I have instruments going to you know, basically a sub bus that then goes to either another bus and then it goes to the instrument buses, which then go to the master bus. Like it's it's like it would just be I, insane to draw out. Yeah, I, I'm I'm the same way. I find the more the more sub mixes I have, the better because it just gives me more control. Like I've like I bus into buses into buses. Like it's just what I'm all about, about these days. Exactly, and and duplicating buses and paralleling and all that stuff. It's so mm-hmm. much easier when things are set out in a logical way. And yes, I have my parallel buses already set up. I have flavors, and I mean the the biggest thing that I always fought when I got into the template game was I don't want my stuff to sound all the same. Right, and that sure. was that was my biggest fight for the longest time of not making a mix template. And man, I will say that none of it, yeah, certain aspects of my mixes sound similar, but every mix and project is different. And as long as there's that reference and you know where you want to go and you're really tapping into that creative part of you, yeah, you know, you're, you're not always doing the same things twice. You're not always EQing a kick drum the same way. Like none of those points are on there. There might be an EQ, but there's no EQ being done. It's you know, default. And the other part about it too is, is kind of like, you, let's say you have a drum kit and you're processing all the individual shells and cymbals and rooms and then you go to the bus level and that's seeing the drum kit as an instrument now and not as, th- you know, an inch from a drum which no one listens to music <laughs> or drums that way. And if you do... You're not going to be listening to anything for very long because you'll be deaf. Yeah. <laughs> right, totally. And so, <laughs> you know, this idea of thinking again, you know, there's the microscopic vision, then there's the step back, and then again, the step right. back of this, you know, again, it's a piece of art. We want to think about it as that. And so, you know, the processing on a drum bus is going to be different than obviously the processing on individual tracks. And if you can get it done on the drum bus and not have to do as much on individual tracks, it sounds yep. better. If you can get it done on the next level up of that with broader strokes, you know, again, Bob's your uncle. You're you're getting to the end point quicker and you're able to be more creative. Right. So I'm assuming you have all your like master bus stuff going from the from the very get go. Yeah. So I I mix into compression. Um I always I I used to be actually a hundred percent in the box. Um and as about I would say a year or two ago, I made the step out uh, a bit, and now I do uh, my my master bus compression outside. And sometimes I will sum to my council, um, and sometimes I won't. And uh-huh. uh, mostly right now, what I have on my master bus, if anyone's curious, is we could get a little nerdy. That's fine. All right, cool. I've got uh, an SSL. Uh, G comp and Classic. a manly very moo and wow. they're going in serial and basically you know they're they're not doing much but the the sum of the parts then going back into pro tools i find that um they deal with the sum of the program material much better than plug in compression does i feel like you know 
and they add tone to things. I think, you know, also at a certain point, 